In a major shakeup in the global financial scene, more and more countries are speeding up their move away from relying solely on the US dollar. This shift used to be just an idea, but now it's happening for real, changing how trade works and shaking up the old power structures. There's tension brewing between countries, worries about how the US handles its money and a push for countries to have more control over their finances. Places like Russia, China and India are leading the charge, looking for other options besides the dollar. BRICS is playing a big part in this. Just recently, Russia and India announced a bold plan to trade oil using their own currencies, which could kick off even more countries moving away from the dollar. For India, jumping into ruble-based oil deals with Russia is a big deal, showing they're ready to shake things up in the financial world. And they're not the only ones. Countries like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are also talking to Russia about making similar money moves, making the impact of de-dollarization even bigger. This has the Western financial world feeling pretty shaken up, worried about what this could mean for the dollar's power around the globe. But before we get into the details, hit that like button and subscribe to Tech Revolution. We're all about bringing you the latest and greatest updates, so you don't want to miss out. All right, let's get right into it. India's Reliance Industries, which runs the world's biggest refining hub, has made a big move by teaming up with Russia's Rosneft. They've agreed to buy at least 3 million barrels of oil every month, and get this, they're paying in rubles only. Now, why the switch to rubles? Well, it's all part of Russian President Vladimir Putin's plan to rely less on the Western money system, especially with all those sanctions from the US and Europe. And for reliance, paying in rubles means they can snag oil at lower prices, especially with OPEC Plus cutting back on supplies. India, one of the top oil buyers and users worldwide, is really making huge steps in the oil game. You can see it in how much more Russian crude they've been buying, especially since the West slapped sanctions on Russia after the Ukraine situation in 2022. This partnership between Reliance and Rosneft shows just how tight India and Russia are getting. They're teaming up on all sorts of projects, from pumping out oil to refining it and selling it. And hey, even Indian HDFC Bank and Russia's Gazprom Bank are getting in on the action, making sure the payments run smoothly. But it's not just about oil. This shift away from the dollar is affecting all kinds of trade between India and Russia. Take engineering exports, for example. They're through the roof, especially in stuff like machinery. This move reflects the changing world order and how India and Russia are working together to mix things up in the financial world. By diversifying how they pay for stuff and relying less on the US dollar, they're strengthening their partnership and making sure they both come out on top. Russia and India teaming up to trade oil in rubles instead of US dollars is sure to stir things up in the West. This move might push Western nations to slap more sanctions on Russia, trying to cut it off from the global economy and slow down its trading. The European Union and the United States already putting tough sanctions on Russia after what happened in Ukraine in 2022 could ramp things up even more they might go after businesses that help with trading in currencies other than the dollar. And you know what else? Western countries might start leaning on banks like India's HDFC Bank and Russia's Gazprom Bank, which are involved in the payment process. They could tell them to follow the sanctions or else face some serious consequences, like getting cut off from big banking systems like SWIFT. Plus, Western leaders might start having more talks with India, really pushing them to stick to the sanctions against Russia. They might use their political and economic ties to try and convince India not to get too comfortable with Russia and to look for oil from other places instead. But that's not all. They might also team up with big oil producers, like the ones in the OPEC Plus group, to make sure there's enough oil going around. This could make it less tempting for countries like India to keep trading with Russia. This whole switch to using rubles for Russian oil might seem like a challenge to the US dollar's dominance in global trade. That's got the West worried about whether their financial sanctions against Russia will still work. To deal with this, they might take a bunch of different steps. They could put sanctions on businesses that help with ruble transactions for Russian oil, trying to mess up this new payment system. They might also try to convince other countries not to follow Russia and India's lead in moving away from the dollar. And they might even think about giving more support to Ukraine, 
using this move as a reason to give them more military and economic help to stand up to Russia. In the meantime, Western banks might keep a closer eye on international transactions, making sure everyone sticks to the sanctions and doesn't try to find other ways to trade without using the dollar. They want to make sure their sanctions still have some teeth and that the dollar stays in charge. India's Reliance Industries and Russia's Rosneft recently shook hands on a year-long deal. Reliance will be scooping up at least 3 million barrels of oil every month from Rosneft. Here's the breakdown. Reliance is grabbing two loads of about a million barrels each of Ural's crude every month. They've got the option to add up to four more loads, all priced $3 cheaper per barrel compared to the Middle East Dubai benchmark. On top of that, they're snagging one or two loads of low sulfur crude, mainly ESPO blend from Russia's Pacific port of Cosmino, at a $1 premium to Dubai prices. And get this. All payments will be in rubles, thanks to India's HDFC bank and Russia's Gazprom bank sticking to Russian President Vladimir Putin's plan to steer clear of Western money systems. So what's the big deal? Well, for Reliance, this means they've got a steady, discounted supply of oil. Super handy, especially if OPEC Plus decides to keep cutting back on supply past June. But there's more to it than just oil. By trading in rubles, Russia is giving the finger to Western sanctions and boosting its economic ties. It also helps Russia keep its currency steady and rely less on the US dollar, even with the sanctions. And for India, buying oil at a discount in rubles means they've got a reliable supply while saving some cash. A big deal for the world's third largest oil buyer. This deal isn't just about oil, it's about shaking things up in the global money game and moving away from the dominance of the US dollar. It might even inspire other countries to make similar moves, changing how money flows around the world. Plus, it's a win-win for India and Russia. It shows India's stepping up as a key player in Russia's energy plan and proves India's not backing down from going after what it wants, even with all the politics going on. Russia and India have a long-standing relationship in energy trade, especially in oil imports. As the world's third largest oil importer, India has strategically become a key buyer of Russian crude. After the Western sanctions on Moscow, India stepped up as the largest buyer of seaborne Russian crude. This shift led India to explore various payment options, including rupees, dirhams, Chinese yuan and now Russian rubles. A big step in this direction is the recent one-year deal between India's Reliance Industries and Russia's Rosneft. Reliance will buy at least 3 million barrels of oil each month, paying in rubles. This move not only ensures a stable oil supply for India, but also aligns with President Putin's vision to reduce reliance on the Western financial system. But the story doesn't end with energy trade. India and Russia have built strong partnerships across various sectors. Russia is India's fourth largest commercial partner, with a total trade turnover of $65.7 billion. This solid relationship extends to collaborations in engineering exports, machinery and aircraft spares. Recently, India has seen a significant rise in engineering goods exports to Russia, especially in machinery and electronics. Defence cooperation is another key aspect of their relationship. India imports a substantial amount of military equipment from Russia, including the S-400 missile defence system. In nuclear energy, Russia has been instrumental in supporting India's power goals, particularly with the Kudankulam nuclear power plant. Moreover, the two countries are exploring joint ventures in space exploration and technology, with agreements in satellite navigation and space research. These collaborations underline the diverse and dynamic nature of the Russia-India partnership, highlighting mutual economic benefits and a shared commitment to broadening their trade and cooperation beyond traditional sectors. The move away from the US dollar in international trade is gaining momentum as several nations seek to diversify their trade relationships and reduce their dependence on the US currency. Countries such as China, Russia, Iran and Venezuela are at the forefront of this shift. They have pursued trade agreements that bypass the US dollar, opting instead for their own national currencies or alternative payment systems. For instance, China and Russia have been engaging in bilateral trade using their currencies, the Chinese Yuan and the Russian ruble. 
This strategy strengthens their economic ties and reduces their exposure to external financial pressures. Similarly, Iran and Venezuela are exploring non-dollar trade mechanisms to circumvent US sanctions and maintain economic stability. Trading without the US dollar brings several advantages, including greater financial autonomy, reduced vulnerability to currency fluctuations, and enhanced resilience against geopolitical uncertainties. By using local currencies or alternative payment methods, nations can shield themselves from the influence of US monetary policies and restrictions. This approach promotes economic sovereignty, fosters regional cooperation, and contributes to the de-dollarization of global trade. It signals a shift towards a more multipolar and diverse financial landscape. What are your thoughts on the recent strategic moves by Russia and India in the global oil trade? Share your insights and opinions in the comments below. And that's it for today. Stay tuned for more and catch you in the next one.